Hello everyone and thanks for joining me. In this video uh, we're going to talk about incremental IRR analysis when you have multiple alternatives, meaning that you have more than two alternatives, let's say five, six alternatives, investment options, and you want to pick the best one using IRR analysis. Well the idea here is that uh, we would order these alternatives again from the smallest uh, initial investment to the highest initial investment and we compare them two at a time that's the idea and we call them pairwise comparison so if you have six options you order them from the smallest initial investment to the largest initial investment and starting from the smallest one you uh, compare these alternatives two at a time and whoever wins each comparison is going to compare it to the next one in the line. So that's the idea and uh, the explanation here might be a little confusing and uh, it's called a challenger defender approach and I'm going to let you guys uh, take a look at the details of these steps where you order the alternatives first and then uh, you start uh, comparing them two at a time. So I think it can be better explained uh, in an example. So let's take a look at this example where you, we have six alternatives as you can see. You have $70,000 available to invest and have been presented with six equal life mutual exclusive investment alternatives with cash flows as depicted below. Currently you are earning 18% on your investment of $70,000. So that means the MARR is 18%. Hence, you will not choose to invest in any of the alternatives if it does not provide a return on investment greater than 18%. So what we want to do here is we want to look at all these six alternatives and see uh, which one is the best one. Well, you already know that when we have multiple alternatives, we've got to do the incremental rate of return. And here what we see for each alternative is the initial investment in the first row, the um, annual return over 10 years. They're going to give us this annual return. They're all positive. Salvage value at the end of year 10. And as you can see here, if you notice, for all of these alternatives, the amount of initial investment and salvage value is the same. Right for alternative A is 40, 40, 15, 15, 10, 10, and so forth. So this is a special case of a cash flow, where I explained it here in this asterisk, where you have such uh, situations where the initial investment and salvage value are the same. IRR of each alternative can be easily calculated by dividing A by P, or annual return by initial investment. So for example, the IRR of alternative A would be 9.25 divided by 40. Here it would be 3.75 divided by 15. Here is 1.5 divided by 10 and so forth. So as you know, the first step is to order these alternatives from the smallest initial investment to the largest initial investment. And in this case, we're going to consider do nothing as an option. And you know, do nothing as an initial investment of zero, basically. So do nothing comes first in the order. And then looking at the initial investments here, you can see that uh, alternative C comes second, and then alternative B comes third, alternative E, then A, and then F, and at last we have D. So that's the order that uh, we're going to have. So um, that's the order. Now what we're going to do is uh, start our pairwise comparison. So the first pair uh, to compare is going to be do nothing with alternative C. See which one uh, is better. And to do that, uh, we've got to calculate the IRR of alternative C, which we already know it's uh, 1.5 divided by 10, 15%. And 
Compare it with do nothing. Well, do nothing means essentially MARR. And MARR of this problem is 18%. Well, we know that 15% is less than 18%. Therefore, do nothing wins in this comparison. So IRR of C minus do nothing is essentially IRR of C, right? And that is 1.5 divided by 10, which is 15%. And because 15% is less than MARR of 18%, do nothing wins. So what we can do at this point, we can essentially cross out alternative C. Well, the next step would be to compare the winner, do nothing, with the next one in the line, which is alternative B. So the next comparison or pairwise comparison would be between do nothing and alternative B. And IRR of B is 3.75 divided by 15. And you can see that here. So that is equal to 25%. Well, 25% is more than MARR of 18%. Therefore, in this case, alternative B wins. So what we can do here is, at this point, we can rule out do nothing, and the next pairwise comparison would be between B and E. And when you are comparing B with E, you got to take a look at the incremental cash flow, and that is E minus B. So step four, E minus B, and that cash flow is... 25 minus 15, 5 minus 3.75, and 25 minus 15 again. So I'm going to write them down as uh, initial investment, annual return, future value, and that would be 10, 1.25, and 10. Well, here, now we're looking at the incremental cash flow. The IRR of this cash flow, which is E minus B, is 1.25 divided by 10, which is 12.5%. Well, again, 12.5% needs to be compared with the MARR, and because it is less than MARR, we choose B. Well, what this means here is that Going from alternative B, which is the uh, smaller initial investment, to alternative E, would require uh, $10 or $10,000 in this case, uh, initial inv more initial investment, and that is only returning us 12.5%. Well, it's not worth it because MARR is 18%, and we're going to stick with the uh, smaller initial investment alternative B. Well, now at this point, we can rule out alternative E. So the next comparison would be between alternative B and alternative A, the winner with the next one in the line. The cash flow that we're going to look at is A minus B, the larger initial investment minus smaller initial investment. And if you look at the Cash flow information here, A minus B is the uh, amounts that I indicated here. And the IRR of A minus B in this case is 5.5 uh, divided by 25, which is 22%. Well, now you can say that that is greater than MARR, so we choose A. So now we can rule out alternative B at this point. The next comparison would be between A and F. Well, IRR of F minus A is 20%. That is, again, more than MARR. 
therefore we choose F. Well at this point uh, we can rule out alternative A and the last comparison would be between F and D. Whoever wins that comparison is the ultimate uh, choice uh, that we're going to pick between all of these uh, investment alternatives. IRR of D minus F is 3 over 20, which is 15%. And we know that 15% is less than MARR of 18%. Therefore, we choose F. So the final winner is alternative F. And here we're coming back. Here we can see the alternative F as the final uh, choice. And you can verify that choice by looking at the present worth. And you can clearly see that present worth of alternative F is larger than all the other ones. And uh, it gives us the same decision that we came up with with the incremental IRR analysis. We're going to be looking at this problem in Excel as well to see the behavior of these alternatives learn uh, implementing such calculation in Excel as well as providing more insights in our analysis.